right, what is up, folks? What is going on? And welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. My name is Mike. I am your host. And as it has been for the last couple of weeks, I'm joined by a few different people in the studio here. First and foremost, I have my usual co-hosts, Catherine and Andrew, back in the studio again. What's up, you two? You call me if I'm in. Yes. <laughs> Very big trouble. Very big trouble. Because you're still trouble. taking notes on your movies right now. So uh, yes. A little bit. It's, it's okay. Like, it's like finishing your homework in homeroom when you have your next class in <laughs> yeah. about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've only had a few weeks to do this. This is definitely the easiest decade to draft in, by the way. So, Andrew, what's up? Not much. Just living the dream. Living know? the dream. Living the dream. I got no complaints. Nice weather out. It's good. Beautiful. I mean, and if you were complaining, who'd listen anyway, right? Nobody yeah, cares. What no. Nobody cares. Nope. Nobody cares. <laughs> See, nobody cares. Dodson. We've got Dodson here. <laughs> See, nobody cares. Anyway, it's a bad joke. Matt, what's up, buddy? We have what? Matt Audet in studio again. How are you doing? Good, man. How about yourself? Good. Excellent. Yep, Excellent. Yep. Yeah, so it, it's, been a, it's been a long journey these last few episodes, guys. We've been uh, doing a lot of drafting, doing mm-hmm. a lot of talking about a lot of different horror movies. And uh, I'm sad to say that uh, the drafting season will come to an end tonight mm-hmm. uh, with the 2010s, the 2010s. The tweens, the teens, as I think the baby. South Park called them. Yeah. The tweens. What fur? But uh, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be dra- we're gonna be drafting some movies from the 2010s tonight. And uh, I mean, we couldn't even continue if we wanted to right now because yeah. the uh, decade of the 2020s is not even close to being not over. Even yeah. Yeah. We'd have to go three. back in time even further. We'd have to go back to like the 60s and the 50s, which would be you know that would be a little bit more difficult. It'd be hard. Yeah, yeah. It'd be pretty hard. I could do. I could probably come up with a decent view for the 60s. Yeah. But not so much. I'd have to. I'd have to do some homework. Yeah. Fifties. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what else we got going on before we uh, before we start drafting? You guys want to get in? Just get right into this, I or so. uh, yeah. have any I'm, I'm news? Good. No, I don't really have any news. I'm sure there is some news out there, but I know we have a lot to cover tonight. So maybe we'll get back into the news when we're done drafting next nice. week. I think so. Nice. All right. So we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing for the last month here. We're gonna do a snake style draft. Which, if you're uh, a fan of fantasy sports, you're probably familiar with that drafting style. Which means we're gonna start at one, go to four, and the fourth pick is gonna pick two in a row, and then go back and forth snake style. So uh, let's see what the order is gonna be this time around. Andrew, give us our sound effect. <laughs> Nice. There Are we go. Are you really going to do that? He just did it. Oh, wait. I thought you were going to do it like... Every pick? Every pick. No. <laughs> no. It's like the, it's the, like, the guy that's trying to yeah. find out where the yeah. uh, golden ticket is in the Wonka bar. Oh. Like, well, good to see that the person who did the most research for this episode is going to have the first overall pick, and that would be Kat. <laughs> uh, followed by our buddy Matt at yes. number two. Yes. With Andrew at number three, and me rounding it out with number four, which means that Kat and I will both have back-to-back picks. Back-to-back. Which could make for some interesting things. And this, honestly, you know, I, I was, we were talking about this before we started recording. I think this is the deepest list of movies that I've had out of any of the decades so far. Yeah, this in the 80s. Yeah. For me, for sure. Yeah. 90s was surprisingly long, too. I kind of, mm-hmm. as I was going into it, I was like, wow, there's a lot more movies that I thought were just late 80s that actually yeah. were 90s movies. So. Yeah. And um, so I think we're all in agreement here that, you know, also kind of like we were talking about before, that this is, this, this decade is too new to necessarily consider anything an outright classic. While I think that there might be a few movies in this decade that may qualify, I think we probably should leave everything on the table here, right? Yeah. Anything I think there's enough movies that not necess- like people still might not have seen them yet. Right. So there, it's worth talking about them. Okay, fair enough. So with that being said, um, I think this is an incredibly strong decade for horror. I think this has kind of led to the horror renaissance that we're in now. I mean, um, yes. I mean, the, the list of movies that is insane that I have in front of me here. There's so many. I feel like we're going to draft five each, so probably talk 20 total movies, not to mention our honorable mentions and, you know... You know, I thought it would have been funny. We could have mentioned, we could have talked a little bit about like some of the worst of a particular decade too. Mm-hmm. That would have been fun conversation. Can always have. do that again. Can always do that again. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, this is just such a deep list, and I, I think really you have a lot of new up and coming horror auteurs in this decade that have kind of made their mark and mm-hmm. made their mark very early, and now are releasing more films. Uh, one of these guys who is releasing his newest movie, I think either this week or next week, uh, Robert Eggers, which The Northman yeah. uh, looks li- and, and sounds like it's fucking awesome. All the reviews are great. I really, really want to see that one. So he may come up in conversation uh, a little bit. But we shall see. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Kat for the number one overall pick. Oh, my goodness. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Um, I'm going to pick... Probably a basic, uh, 2000 Insidious. Okay. Um, because I 
vividly remember being like scared shitless at the very end of that movie when we were watching it. I remember when Mike and I were first dating. We were watching it in Quincy, and like that last scare with the last guy. Like right behind the jump scare. Oh my the god! Jump scare. I almost peed my pants. Like, yeah, was... like the red face. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And like the whole concept of it, with you know going into like the great beyond and the whole. I I watched mm-hmm. like several of that, like at least two other ones, yes. two or three after that. Cause I, I like them. I, so we much. we've seen them all. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've seen them all. And I. Um, they're obviously a varying quality. I think overall they're they're decent, but this is probably the best one. Oh, absolutely! All of them. It's like the song. Movie. And that that's probably yeah. the mo- one of the most effective jump scares that I can think of Ever. in any movie. Yeah, yeah. like it's a really effective, really yeah. scary, really scary jump scare. So yeah, and the rest of the night you're just looking over your shoulder, being like, "Guy gonna come get me?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I like those movies. I like the concept of it. I think that it's interesting, like more than just a scary movie. But it's like keeps you on your toes the entire time. I'm always at the ed- edge of my seat in City. Yeah, movie, so it is an interesting concept. Like you know, going into like the astral plane right. to like you know the, yeah. the further they the call further, it, the further, right. no, and like no, the great no, the beyond, great beyond. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to uh, you know, to 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 exercise those demons yeah. that are uh, haunting those people. Not necessarily that house, those people. Yeah, I think that was the tagline for the movies when it first came out. It's like, what if a person was haunted and not a house was? Haunted? But uh, yeah, and obviously. Lee, Lee Winnell and uh, James Wan, the creative team yeah. behind the Insidious movies, who also did Saw, and now they, you know, Every obviously day. they're they've done so much <laughs> awesome horror stuff. They like built Blumhouse. Yeah, right? essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you're not a, as big of a fan of these movies, or is it the Conjuring? The Insidious movies? ones. Yeah. The Insidious ones. I'm definitely. I like the Conjuring ones better. Okay. Insidious. I'm definitely the on the lesser. List. They're not bad, but it's just not my sure thing. Yeah. Not your particular cup of tea. No. Cool. Awesome. Well, nice little pick there. Number one overall, My Insidious. Little nice little pick. Anyone have any other thoughts on Insidious before we uh, move no, on? No, I mean, I agree. It's a, it's worth watching. It's a good movie. Great jump scare. It's I like the concept. You know how they have, like, he's like... It's almost like, like the Matrix. Dreams, kind of. Is that like what it is? Yeah. Like? yeah. Anytime you have a, a child who's the forefront of the danger is yeah. also a big thing, too. I mean, that works Absolutely. very well in yeah. a lot of situations. And he's not, like, I feel like in horror movies there's so many annoying kids, like, he's not annoying. Yeah, he's sleeping the whole he's movie. He's, like, sleeping yeah. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would he be annoying? Like, I'm like, the kid yeah. from The Ring is annoying, the kid from yeah. The Babadook is annoying, like, there's so many kids in horror movies that are, like, so annoying. The kid from The Babadook is, is the worst. Beyond, Probably the most yeah. annoying child in the <laughs> movie. Yeah. The kid from The Ring's really, really bad, too. He's oh, really my creepy. God. Yeah, he's creepy. Ugh. All right, so Insidious, off the board. For anyone else that was considering taking it, that means we're on to you, Matt. I know. I, right. I want to know what See, it is. I was worried that uh, this could get taken, so I'm glad I got my second pick. I'm going to go with uh, 2000. Where is it? I lost it. 2016, Damien Leone's Terrifier. Oh, Ooh. Oh, so weird. Okay. So, good. Yep. so yep. I love this movie so much, dude. This movie <laughs> rocks. Art the Clown is easily the most horrific clown of all time. Yeah. Disgusting. And uh, he's just f- unbelievably vicious fucking serial killer character. Yeah. Um, looks scary as shit. I don't know if he's a fucking demon. If he, you know what I mean? Like there's like a supernatural element to him because it seems like he can't die. So he was also there. There was another uh, basically anthology movie called All Hallows Eve by the same director that spawned this character with a few of uh, the other. There's like three short movies that he made that he compiled into one thing. Another good watch if you haven't seen that. Check that out. Too. But um, this movie is so over the top. It's like super like 80s splatter. Like just love note to that. So nice. if you haven't seen it, it's hardcore. Um, there's a few scenes in it that are just, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give any too much away, but it's just, it's unrelenting. It's got good jump scares. It's got just balls to the wall gore. Uh, the music is great. Just this movie kicks so much ass and I'm so happy that I got to pick it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the general creepiness in that movie too. I, I saw it once like forever ago and there's like the one scene where they're in like the pizza shop it's like yep. the two girls and they're like drunk or whatever and he's yeah. just like being such a creep and it's just like yeah. gives you this unsettling because also he's got like black teeth it's just like yeah, he looks what a clown like probably yeah. the best like Better than like the it clown, like oh oh, oh yeah, you look better than Pennywise. Than, yeah. Easily the scariest. Up clown. up there for me with like you know the ghastly grinner from Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Like, yeah. Remember that one or like fucking uh, what was the other clown? Zebo the clown from like, like just yeah. terrifying clown what was shit. That one oh my god, movie. Was it called Clown? It was like an Eli Roth. The movie. Eli Roth one. Yeah, that was a creepy. Like yeah. where he like turned into yeah, the he clown, wears that haunted like, clown yeah. suit. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, easily, number yeah, one. this this movie absolutely rocks. If you haven't seen it, and you especially if you like eighties slashers, just do yourself a favor. It's on Tubi. It's free. 
Go and watch it. Um, Could shit on Tubi, man. Yeah, they got everything. They 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 really have everything. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Something going on with Tubi. Dude, it's just, it's 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 the best. Like, I'm almost nervous that, like, like, when we keep talking about it, they're going to make it cost money. But, yeah. There's ads and stuff, so, I mean, that's probably how they're able to pull it off. But, dude, like, you can't think of one movie on there that's not on there. Blows my mind. Yeah. There's a lot of shit on there, for sure. And you can deal with a minute worth of commercials. Not even. It's like you get like two two ten second commercials. Oh my god, yeah. Absolutely. And it's like every like half hour. And it's it's, uh, free. So that's always good. Nice pick. Thank you. Nice pick. He was pumped. Excellent. I I, I wasn't worried Cat was going to pick that. Yeah, definitely not. No, 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 no. Well, we're off to a strong start here. Terrifier. Oh, it's my turn. Off the board, yes. All right, Andrew. That means you yeah, are up. We actually do have a snake. Ding, 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 ding. We do have a snake. Yeah. Yeah. see how snake like I can be. <laughs> <laughs> I say that every time, but that's fine. I know Mike loves that. Yeah. <laughs> um, she the worms. worms. Yeah. Walshie's <laughs> worms. Worm talk, baby. So I feel like this is kind of an obvious pick. We all know me. I'm going to go with 2019's Jordan Peele's Us. Wow. Shocker. I know, right? Because it's just super weird, and it always has, like, these hidden meanings to it. Basically, you got two different types of people. You got the haves and the have-nots, and the hangers who live below, and they live up top, and they get to enjoy life. But then what happens when the... uh, People that live down below get fed up with shit and mm. start to start to rebel take over. And it's just so weird and the music's great. Like I love how they take uh fives on it or whatever the name of that song is. Five on it. I got, I got five, five on it. it. I'm sorry. Whatever. Come on. But like and just they make it so melodic and so It's like sinister. It's sin- it's yeah. so good. Like the scene towards the end of the movie when she's just like fighting herself. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Is can you do the voice? Why did you live? <laughs> we are the devil. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. It is an incredibly creepy movie. Well acted. Yeah. yeah, well done. Just so different and so unique is what I like about it. Like, I mean, it's hard to like find a movie that that like slightly was inspired by, I guess. But I'm sure there was a few. Hmm. It's just so say, different. Like, Body snatchers. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's, all I that's about it. But yeah. like, it was just like so well. Like, I love those weird, like, psychological, just kind of like, what the fuck is even going on in this yeah. movie? And yeah. it, you don't even under really under like you watch it and then you go, I need to watch this like eight more yeah. times yeah. to know what is going on. And then you still watch it and you still have generally no idea what's going on. Oh yeah. But you can sense for, the for general sure. theme, for which sure. is what I like about Jordan Peele's movies. They always have like a certain theme and like a take. Yeah. On. Yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, obviously, he he's another one of the names that kind of you know, came about in the 2010s between, you know, Get Out mm-hmm. and this movie, and now he's got his third film oh, coming out, wait. which I, I yeah, can't wait to sweet. see what he does with Alien stuff. And I feel like he's just very good at doing, like, the twisty, almost kind of sci-fi, like, weird horror stuff. And, I mean, yeah. you know, he, he was behind that uh, latest Twilight Zone revival, mm-hmm. which was actually not really that good him as uh him as him, him stepping in him right? yeah him him and him stepping in for uh rod <laughs> serling was probably the best part about it yeah but the stories weren't necessarily all that great um he did lovecraft country right he also was involved in lovecraft country yeah, yeah. so and he's in candy man, Candyman. Yep. 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 So he, like, he's kind of he's good. he's hitting home runs all over the place but this movie i think i actually like a little bit better than get out personally yeah, i think so too i think it's creepier it's such a weird concept it's well executed and i just i really like this movie a lot and, elizabeth uh, Moss, yeah, the cast is mm-hmm. really good too. Everyone, oh, everyone so I've good. seen it. So that, 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 like the, the little kid with the mask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When it's playing like that uh, Beach Boy song, and it's just yeah, yes. that's probably one of my uh. favorite scenes in the movie. Lupita Nyong'o is awesome yeah. in the movie, Phenomenal. and then yeah, she's, uh, she's good in literally everything. Yeah, yeah. She's in <laughs> Tim Heidecker too is all in yeah. it. Like I feel like every, everybody, yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, pretty pretty awesome. It has some good laughs in it too. Oh yeah, that's the thing with George Peele. Obviously, he came from comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. he's gonna, he's gonna. I have a feeling Nope is gonna have some like real good laugh out loud yeah. situations too. I yeah. think so too. I, I, I honestly, I cannot wait to see what he That's does. That's like with probably that. the movie that I can't wait to see the most here, other than yeah. Help. I love Alien shit, so I'm very excited to see what he does with that. Mm. Seems like it's tailor made for him. That's gonna be a blockbuster. It's coming out in June. Yeah, it's, I can't it's, wait. It's, That's they, the month they baby. set it up. They have yeah. the Super Bowl spot and everything. So. Yep. All right, so that means that us is Mike off the board. Two. So I got two in a row here, and I am going to take first what I consider to be one of, if not the strongest monster movie of the 2010s. Oh, I know you. Strongest might be uh, a little bit of an a l- little bit of an exaggeration, um, but one of my personal favorites of the 2010s. Uh, I'm going to take from 2017, The Ritual, which is a uh, Netflix exclusive film. Excellent. Um, this is another one of those movies, and if you if you're a fan of this show, you know kind 
kind of my take is that the thing that necessarily makes a good monster movie, oh, there's a few things. Well, one is obviously a very good monster, and I think this might have one of the most original and creative monsters that have come out of any movie in recent years. It is when you see it, you're like, holy shit, that is a really weird looking monster, and it looks good. And <laughs> the premise behind, or the, the premise of the story is really interesting and good, and there's a lot of layers to it. There's a lot going on aside from the fact that it's just a monster movie. Because, you know what, like... Any movie can be a monster movie, but the fact that it actually has a good, decent story behind it is what I, takes it over the top for me. So basically you have the story about, uh, you know, four friends, a group of four friends that used to be a group of five friends. One of their friends was tragically killed, and uh, one of the other friends was there that night and may or may not have been able to do something to prevent it from happening, and his friends may or may not still blame him for that. So there's already tension amongst this group, and they're hiking in the woods, I believe, in sweden or uh somewhere in in uh in in uh excuse me in eastern europe and all this weird shit starts happening and there may be cult stuff involved there may be monsters involved so i feel like this kind of takes like culty horror like almost kind of like the wicker man or midsummer and combines it with like blair witch Folky, and yeah. also brings a, a, a humongous monster element into it as well so i can't say enough good things about the ritual i love this movie right on I, it's it's an excellent movie yeah like it's one of my favorite netflix original yeah have you ever seen um it's see i don't consider this a horror movie so probably uh calibre or Caliber. caliber, yeah, I've seen uh, that movie's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a caliber, fun. that movie's good as well. Like it's yeah. very like similar, like just very tense situations. Yes, that's the one with the guys that go on the hunting trip and they accidentally and shoot, they shoot somebody. somebody yeah, at, that then, like, like lives in the town they're staying in, and yeah. yeah, they try and cover it up. That's actually a really good fucking movie. Yeah. That's yeah. more like a thriller. Yeah, but it's really too. Yeah. Other yeah. Okay. Calibre. All right. Calibre. Yeah. So I think it's like I didn't think it's definitely. I think ca- it's caliber, caliber from like spelt... like the the caliber of bullet that was yeah. used to yeah. kill. It was a kid, I but think, it's not right? As a child, like caliber. It's spelled oh, like calibre. Calibre. Yeah. calibre. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I don't know how to spell caliber. Which is false yeah. too. All right. So that means. Uh, any, oh, anyone else have anything else on the ritual before we uh, move along? I think it goes under the radar for a lot of people. Yeah. Being just a Netflix. Kind of so, like people Antlers. kind of have like a stipulation with like these straight to streaming service things especially back then yeah where now they're coming out they're a lot more like mainstream but yep before i think people were like oh must suck. it's like it's like the new version of like straight to dvd or something yeah so definitely i think it's worth watching if you see yeah it. definitely you can definitely draw parallels but i think between the ritual and antlers yeah. i think the monsters are a little bit very similar. similar yeah similar i haven't seen similar. antlers yet. antlers is good oh, yeah. it's yeah. very very yeah. good, good movie. that's a fucking dark movie really dark yeah, about, yeah it's just the whole yeah. movie's just you just yeah, feel you feel it bummed you up. It's you like feel seven, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. raining all the time. Everything's just yeah. dark. You just feel icky like, when the movie's over. Icky, it, yeah, <laughs> icky. It's, feel, it's like oh god, I need to watch uh, four episodes icky. of South Park. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that means so it's back to me here again. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go with a movie from 2018, and I think this is probably one of the most fun horror movies of the decade and uh, features one of the uh, one of my favorite up-and-coming actors. Um, so The Thing is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And uh, Kurt Russell stars in The Thing, and he's fucking awesome in it as R.J. McCready. What a stud. And uh, turns out that Kurt Russell's son is also an actor, Wyatt Russell. And uh, if you see him in this movie or any movie that he's in, he looks like Kurt Russell in The Thing, but blonde. He's got the thick beard, the long hair. And the movie I'm talking about is called Overlord. Which oh, yeah, uh, I mean, was, I believe, okay. produced produced by J.J. Abrams. Going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think. Of, yeah, it was a roundabout way of getting there. But uh, so basically, they were thinking at, at one point that this was actually going to be part of the Cloverfield universe. But I'm actually glad that it wasn't. It's actually an even cooler concept. It's like if they turned the Nazi zombie concept from like Call of Duty or mm-hmm. whatever the games are into a feature length movie, and it's fucking awesome. So Kurt Russell's kid plays this. Uh, you know, it's basically it's World War II. They're in France. U.S. soldiers are uh, trying to basically destroy this radio tower in a part of France, and it turns out that the Nazis that are uh, holed up in this town have developed a serum that turns the dead Nazi soldiers into reanimated zombies that have crazy super strength. And it's mm. fucking awesome. It's gory as shit. It's wild. It's really, mm. really cool. So it's kind of like they took Reanimator and mixed it with like a World War II yeah. movie. It's a fucking lot of fun. Uh, I love this movie. I don't know if any of you guys have even... even have you guys yep. seen it? Yeah, I've seen, I you haven't saw seen it. Yeah. Overlord. No. No. Overlord's awesome. It's really, really good. So. I always think that it's a it has that Nazi like human experiment element to it, which is like yes. already scary enough. 
So uh, I was into it when it came out, and I didn't really know what it was going to be. I kind of thought it was going to turn them into monsters and shit, but yep. it's more, it's like more zombies. But um, I thought it was good. I was Like you said, it's it's super violent, super gory. Oh, yeah. Wicked body horror. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I was I was pretty yeah. into it. It's it's, it's some good stuff. I mean, yeah. if you're looking for a good time horror movie, something that you want to watch and just be like, all right, this is very entertaining, I say look no further than this movie. Yeah. Uh, there's one scene, my favorite scene, where they uh, essentially inject a soldier that's still alive with this serum and holy shit watch out it's yeah. uh it's a fucking dope movie so yeah overlord i'm going overlord at two so overlord nice. off the board yes which means we're back to you and mr Andrew. um i thought you were gonna pick it so i didn't 2019 robert eggers the lighthouse knew you were gonna pick the lighthouse <laughs> <laughs> it was so good <laughs> It's just, Arc! Arc! I mean, could you ask for a better like cast for those two guys, Pattinson and Defoe? They're they're amazing. The dialogue yeah. is amazing. The just dread that's building throughout the movie, like it's 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 just palpable. Like it's just never ending. Like just waiting, it's waiting. Agonizing. It's just, it's just so good. The black and white, the score. It's just. It's. It was tough. I. I was having trouble picking between this and The Witch because I love The Witch. Mm. I think that's a great movie too. But I think this movie is just better because of Willem Dunson. It's just so weak and it's so pressing. It's everything I look for in, yeah. a, in a movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, for sure. It makes me feel good inside. <laughs> it. it just does. It's just so sad and just upsetting. Just I think Willem Dafoe should have earned an Oscar nomination. Something. Oh, yeah. I, mean, he was like, I don't know how you really don't get anything for that. He was phenomenal. I think we movie. talked about this in the episode we did on The Lighthouse, but mm-hmm. that that basically that so like you know soliloquy like oh, monologue right. he does that was one take the mm-hmm. first take and they they used it which is I mean, fucking insane <laughs> his ability to just deliver a line unparalleled i don't think there's anybody that can follow yeah that. he looks and he looks like a horror monster yeah like, he just looks yeah, like a monster he's, he's an intense looking person yeah. he's also yeah. so he's also in the northman eggers yeah. new movie too oh, yeah. along with uh, a bunch of other Andy taylor joys joys in it too oh, andrew baby. your favorite but, I mean, I just think that he's, like, I, I can picture Willem Dafoe, like, behind, uh, on set at a movie, like, rubbing his hands together and be like, oh, boy, <laughs> this here's a motion picture we're in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to deliver these lines. And, like, <laughs> even, like, when we watched, like, Nightmare uh, Nightmare Alley, like, he was great in that movie, too. Yeah. Like, another, like, similar thing. So, he's well, he awesome. Great as this the, movie um, rocks. He was great as, uh, wasn't he Nosferatu in that... Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, Shadow of the Vampire. Yeah. Yeah. He was awesome yeah. in that movie. Yep. John Malkovich. Just, yeah. yep. <laughs> yep. That, movie's, that movie's good. Yeah, I yeah. like that movie. It's an underrated Replays movie. He plays Max Shrek. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I would say The Lighthouse, probably one of the best movies ever made where no, like arguably nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> and it's the same location with the same two people yeah. and a crow. And, yeah. And well, it's, it's like how much does actually happen well, no, and not happen, not too. Yeah. Like you yeah. don't really know what is yeah. real and not real. Yep. So. Dude, just like the unsettling, like weird like masturbation scenes. Like just, So much like, masturbating. Yeah. So masturbating much and farting. But it just makes it so real gross, because you're, like, you're just guy trapped shit. and you're just drinking whatever you have to drink. You're getting... Shit faced, mm. and then you're just the mermaid drinking, drinking yeah. turpen, turpentine yeah. with honey, and yeah. just I mean, losing your fucking mind. I could picture me and you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you were trapped, <laughs> just farting all over each other. <laughs> Put us on uh, fucking. Yeah. And I will still, I will, I will happens. still stand by my take from the episode that we did. This is probably. Uh, one gigantic uh, cosmic monster scene away from being the best Lovecraft movie ever oh, made. This, yeah, this, yeah. this is the the epitome of madness personified yeah. in a movie. I think, 100%. which is what Lovecraftian horror is about a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm, I, I had a feeling you were going to pick that. I movie thought you were going to sure. pick it, so I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I was thinking about it. There's honestly, there's just so many this decade that could fall into this conversation. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I just it's hard to pick. It's like. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just trying to I'm trying to pick things that I we ha- I haven't talked about at length. Yet. I know that's the problem. You know? Is I feel like yeah. we've talked about so many of these movies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Good pick with the lighthouse. I mean, tough to argue with that one. Which means that we are back to you. Yes. So I'm gonna go with. Um, it is 2015. Jeremy Saulnier's Green Room. Ooh, good one, good one, good one. Um, this is another movie I really love. He has another movie that came out, I believe, in 2013, called Blue Ruin, which is also really, really good. Yeah. Not horror, uh, more of a thriller, but nonetheless, fantastic movie. So, Green Room, if you haven't seen it, uh, stars Anton Yelich, uh, R.I.P., and um, yeah. Patrick Stewart. Um, and so basically. <laughs> Uh, Anton headline or he fronts a punk band and they are traveling around and they get 
into this venue. I want to say it's in like New Jersey, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. But um, they go to this venue and it's all like skinheads. So they're like, all right, like this fucking sucks, but they need money. So they're like, whatever, let's just play our fucking show and get the fuck out of here. So they do that. And meanwhile, while they're playing their set, someone kills someone in their like green dressing room, basically. Yeah, yeah, yep. And so they go back and they he goes to go back in and he sees the girl on the floor. The guy stabbed her like in the side of the fucking head. And so at that point, the guy that did it is like in with the people that own this venue and, like, run this kind of, like, underground, like, neo-Nazi bullshit. So, yeah. it turns into basically a fucking live-or-die situation where they're... And, like, there is some gruesome, Ooh, it's brutal. brutal death scenes in this movie. Oh, yeah. It's very violent. Um, and it's, like, like I where I picked Terrifier earlier, that was, like, very splattery and, like, over the top. This movie is just fucking cutthroat. Real Realistic, life yeah. violence, and it's really, really, really rough. I just, I, I, the scene where they break that guy's arm, yeah, backwards, yeah, that will stick with me forever. That yeah. was fucking nasty. That dude's like a comedian too. He's been on like Drunk History and shit like a bunch of times. Like, really? Yeah, he's a gigantic bastard too. Yeah, yeah, he's a huge dude. But yeah. he was on Drunk History a few times. But like they have that whole scene, and like Anton Yellick like gets his arm fucked up too. Yeah. Um, he, like, sticks his arm out the door trying to, like, basically, they have a gun and they want to, like, make an exchange. Like, they're just trying to get out. Like, give us a phone, call the cops. So, yeah, there's one scene where they stage the cops being called and they're like, yeah, we had a stabbing. So they can just kind of, like, put it on record that, yes, someone did get stabbed, but they have two of the kids just, like, they get into a fist bite and they stab each other. And that's what the cops get called for. Right. So technically, it's just, like, it's fucking really, really just, like, fucking harsh. Uh, Eric Edelstein is the the guy that gets ah up. you know what okay um, so he's been in a few other things too I thought he <laughs> he looked really familiar he was in an episode of the Creep Show show uh, TV series yeah he plays sure. the Terminator uh, the, the, yeah, the exterminator the, yep, yeah, that's yeah, right yeah. yeah he does yeah um so yeah dude and it just turns into just a bloodbath like you're you're really watching these kids get fucked up yeah and uh, it's rough but it's a sick movie um you get to watch people kill fucking neo nazis which is also fucking rad yeah yeah um so yeah green room that's my second pick what an interesting role for patrick stewart too playing like the head of the neo nazi like cult yeah. wild you can't go wrong with patrick yeah stewart, though. Just he's different. very he's very like cool calm and collected the whole yeah. time yeah um and then yeah it's weird seeing him play a very, villain, it's a know? good the, it's a it's a good ending i like how it all plays out so yeah I, this is this is the type of movie I, so I, i've seen it once i i would love to rewatch this because i think i saw it right when it came out and i haven't watched it since but yeah it's definitely it's it's a messed up movie i'm pretty sure it's still on netflix oh that's an easy watch yeah. easy rewatch then yeah it's not long it's like it might be 100 minutes tops like it's yeah yeah and it makes so. you think too. I mean, God, what a what a tragic way that that kid died too. Uh, yeah, you Anton like Yelchin, freak Yelchin, accident. Yeah, oh, yeah. like you just got, you got like run over by his, his car. Own like, garage. Oh, like yeah. yeah, that's terrible. So, uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. to that. He's kid. young yeah, too. Great, yeah, real, real young, real young. But uh, yeah, Green Room. That's an awesome movie. Yeah. Solid flick. That's the type of movie. Like even if you, <laughs> yeah, that you, you, that's a movie you got to see. You got to see yeah. that one. Yep, yeah. it's, it's very good. Good flick. Very a good choice. Nice pick, Matt. Thank you. All right. Catherine, we back to you. Um, for two. Back to you for two. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with Kevin in the Woods. Oh, nice. Because right. I knew Mike was going to Yeah, if it was still there, I might have yeah. taken it. But that's okay. Um, I love this movie so much. Go just ahead. to kind of piggyback on my terrible 13 ghost pick from the last <laughs> <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah, Kevin in the Woods, I feel like, is like a classic. I mean, you I can't like really... Movie. Like, this movie's hate, funny as shit. Yeah, it's you so can't good. hate it. It's Yeah, it's like what you said before, like horror movies that are kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and like the whole underground lab thing, and they're making bets on who people... Like watching the, the whole... What is it? Five, five teenagers, and they play each role like the yeah, they're like the stereotype roles, yeah, yeah. 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 the yeah. Joker, the Virgin, the athlete, the whatever. Yep. Um, and Sigourney Weaver makes her appearance the at the girl. end. <laughs> like, yeah, what an awesome cameo by her. <laughs> this movie rocks. Yeah. I love this movie. It's a cool twist. Yeah, because yeah. you you kind of like don't know what exactly like you're like is this just really just gonna be that movie and then you're like oh my like yeah. wow like, yeah it, yeah it's like it's a lot like scream that it just like is its own satire in itself being 
the movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, you, know what I mean? so. you you actually you took the words right out of my mouth. This is the 2010s version of Scream, where it's a meta, self-aware yeah. horror movie where the characters know what's going on. They're aware of horror movies, except. Uh, this movie kicks Scream in the dick, slits its throat, and oh, yeah. buries it six feet under the ground. This movie is yeah. so much better than fucking Scream. It's it is, awesome. It's outrageous. Well, and it has every single monster like known to yeah. man. Like, which, Joker's the best ca- character yeah. in the whole movie. Oh, absolutely. Oh, he's awesome. The stoner. Yeah, when he's actually stoner. When, he, when he's beating the hillbilly with the yeah. with the bong, like yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. And honestly, like some of the laughs between uh, Richard Jenkins and uh, Bradley Whitford that play the two guys like down below. Yeah. Yeah. they're both hilarious. Yeah. That's all awesome stuff happening, and I mean that last act, the underground stuff is fucking unbelievable. And when There's the so many gets cool. left yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, so awesome! It's just blood everywhere, and all you see just like something fall from the ceiling and splat. Yep. And you're just like, yep. <laughs> the guy gets eaten by the merman. Yeah, the merman. And yeah. like, <laughs> get a very young Chris Hemsworth in this movie. He's a stud. Yeah, they're all yeah. betting on like what's gonna happen. Yeah, so I love good. it. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It's 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 great. This, yeah. I gotta give that a rewatch. I, I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah, oh, but it is it is really good. I own, we own it. I'll, I'll yeah, borrow it. It's a rare yeah, movie yeah. where the second half is like substantially better than the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I I absolutely love this. And this is another movie that we've done a full episode on. We did that one a long time. Is ago. the redhead girl Erin from The Office? Oh, good question. I don't, I don't know. know. Is that who that is? Um, I could same be. Girl, I could that's be wrong. from. Uh, she had like her own show too. I don't, I don't know. know. Like, I don't Aaron know. was like what the secretary that like took over later in the office. No, it's not. Okay. Kristen right. Connolly is Kristen Connolly. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, it's a great pick. It's a great movie. Thank you. And uh, Cat pick. Thank the, you. the ending's awesome. I mean, you get a you get Sigourney Weaver at the end, and then you get uh, a Nine Inch Nails song to close the movie out. So this and Ario Speedwagons. And Ario Speedwagons. So this movie has Mike written all the fuck over it. Yeah, I stole it. I knew you. Would you did steal it. Yep. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for that I one. I stole it. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. that yeah. one. I mean, say what you will about Joss Whedon. Now he's kind of been canceled, but he directed this movie, and this movie's awesome. So Do you know what else? Else. So this isn't a movie, but when I was researching the whole 2010 beyond, mm-hmm. guess uh, what TV series came? Uh, American the Walking Dead. The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, is now coming to an end in 2022. Yeah. Until they do another 37 spin offs. <laughs> yeah, what about Fear the Walking Dead? Fear, Fear the, the Walking, Walking Dead. Dead and Fear the Talking Dead. So, we could do a whole show on this because oh, this makes me so face fucking face? angry that The Walking Dead essentially has just taken the piss out of their own show because they just had their mid season finale for the last season. I hate those. And they've already announced that every main character on the show is getting their own spin-off yeah. after the show is done. What <laughs> stakes are there in just this like, show? Just keep making the same fucking show. Dude, right. they're doing a Carol and Daryl spin-off. They're doing a Negan like and Maggie spin-off. Daryl they're doing like, like what? Like the it's fuck? like do they like they get an apartment together like Yeah, what, just hang out and like you know some hijinks and <laughs> yeah. like what the fuck? Yeah. This is so, like they're so like uh, I, I understand they're trying to they're trying to suck that thing dry and <laughs> for every dollar that it's worth. Like, I'm Daryl, but, like, and I'm if, if you like honestly, if you are still in, <laughs> invested in The Walking Dead, like I want to hear from you as to fucking why. I, I don't I understand. If, I wonder if Shauna still watches it. This, there can't, there's no way. There's he can't. I I can't. I don't. I, I don't know any sane person. Shauna, if you're that listening, still do you still watch that. The Walking Dead? Yeah. I don't know. I we guess one of my roommates at one point. We used to have Walking Dead meat. Walking yeah. Dead meat. <laughs> I, uh, <dinners. laughs> I stopped watching in season three. Yeah. When they go to the Good jail. Good for you. Yeah. After, what's his, her name? Lori? Was that Rick's name? Yeah. Wife? After yep. she dies and he like sees her ghost like in the thing and he's yeah. like, get out! Yeah. Get out! <laughs> I was like, this show is fucking get whack. Out. Get out! Yeah. Yeah, dude. Coral. 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 I was like, Jesus Coral. Christ. I was like in high school, too. And I was oh, like, yeah. damn. Like, even at, like, I was like probably a freshman in high school. I was like, this yeah. show's stupid. See, like, yeah. I thought the first, I, see, I, I think the first three seasons were awesome. Uh, the, what, what, and once the stuff with the governor ended, I think it was, that was like end of season three or beginning of season four, it started to go downhill. But the first couple of seasons were awesome. And then they just were like, you we know. We watched it for way too long. Way too Special long. effects are great. Way too long. Oh, yeah. that, that's the best part. The most endearing part about yeah. it, if you're a horror fan, is the, you know, Greg Nicotero yeah. special effects. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we also got The Walking Dead in 2010. Fun stuff. Fun, Fun stuff. And it's stuff. here it is, 12 years later, still going strong. So, Kat, we're still on you for one here. I'm going to go, so I'm going to do a movie that we haven't talked about. I'm trying to not do, because I could pick, the, my next four picks, three picks could be all movies we've already talked about. So I'm going to go with 2000's Hush. Nice. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I had that on my list, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad. That's 
not just me. <laughs> Every usually it's just like my pick. Like it's such a cat pick. Like oh, it's someone. No, I like this movie. Mm-hmm. It was good. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a like thriller. I think the whole concept of it is kind of messed up with this mm-hmm. deaf mute girl who's like, I get that she wants to be in. This. She's a writer. She yeah, is. I, I haven't yep. watched it in a long time. I haven't watched yeah. it in a long time either, but I remember watching it being like, wow. And like he messes with her, this intruder. Like, well, he has no her. idea that she's deaf. Right. He yeah. figures it out yeah. at one point. And that he, at least she can't hear. Yeah. And then, like, grabs her phone, starts texting her, like, pictures of herself from outside. Yeah. So it's kind of like another, like, scream kind of thing, whatever. But, um, yeah. It has a lot of stuff to do with, like, iCloud. Yeah. I remember it's, like, very, like, yeah, yeah, tech yeah. savvy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But you're just wondering the entire time, you're like, how is she going to, like, figure out where he is? She can't hear anything. She can't, like, I mean, she can lock all the doors, but he's going to break in and she won't even hear if, she, if he does. But um, ultimately, because I always, I appreciate Final, that's why I think, so she ultimately kills him with that cork. Yep. And, you, you, we watched we this watched together, this right? We watched this movie together, yeah. Yeah. You, so wait, you, so you mean to tell me that the fact that she killed him with a corkscrew, a wine, a bottle opener for wine? Like, I like that. The, 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 of course, that has something to do with this selection as well. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, yeah, uh-huh. it does, yeah. yeah. And she's like, you know, at the end, she obviously the, each of them are kind of or whatever, and the police is just like sitting like on her on her front stoop, like stroking her cat, like smiling, like okay, like this is this is fine, because like her friend at one point I think comes to like check up on her, and he kills him too. Um... But yeah, I I liked it as a different kind of. I thought it was like thriller, kind of edge of your seat. Because I was gonna pick like a quiet play. I mean, well, that's, that's, that's a Mike Flanagan movie. It is. Mm-hmm. Say so this was Flanagan before his uh, before his his bigger hits in this decade. I you think he, he did he did a lot of movies this decade. Yeah, he does. I have like four of his yeah. movies on my yeah. list. <laughs> have you ever seen um, <coughs> Wait Until Dark? Yeah, until the Audrey one Hepburn with Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, she's blind. I love that yes. movie. Yes, well, I, I love. I was Audrey actually Hepburn, gonna bring that so up too. Very where they have the the drug dealers going yeah, into yeah. Robert. They yeah. have like the doll at the house, and it's got like the drugs in it. And yeah, I think it's know. got heroin in it or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a really good movie. You do love Audrey Hepburn. You're quite, quite <sighs> Audrey Hepburn. That's a sick movie. Amazing. If you haven't, that's seen a good movie. That's quite, on quite the hundred scary movie moments. That's and that's like a six. That's a sixties movie too, right? Yeah, it's that's like a top twenty on that list. Yeah, sixties, I think. All right, all right. Excellent. Excellent. So hush off the board. Shh. Shh. Hush. Hush. <laughs> little baby. Don't say a word. That's Good job. Good job. Good job. Thanks. All right. So that means we're back to you, Mr. Audette. All right. Let's see here. Now that I got like my two big ones off. A little... Yeah. Um, Let's get weird. So, all right. I have a couple that I can definitely wait on. I'm going to go with uh, 2013 uh, Freddy Alvarez's Little Death. Ooh, I had a oh, you might nice. this one. This movie rocks. It's easily, it's up there with the best remakes ever made. Yeah. If not the best it remake could ever be made. number one. Uh, we said that last time with Hills Have Eyes, and it's been said about Dawn of the Dead, but this movie kicks ass. Um, it's pretty much a complete reimagining of the same kind of idea, but... It's way more fucking hardcore. It's way darker and just mean. Like, there's not a single scene in this movie that you can even be like, <laughs> like, nothing yeah. is funny about this movie at all whatsoever. It's yeah. super, it takes itself extremely seriously, and it is just unrelentingly just harsh. Yeah. Um, I remember when it came out, I was a senior in high school when this came out, and I was, like, so fucking excited. This movie, opening night, me and a few buddies went. My buddy Eric, dude, he's like 6'4". He's fucking just a hulking monster. And he, I swear, I thought he was going to come out of the movie with a head full of fucking gray hair. He was like so <laughs> rattled, dude. And it was just because it's just, it was so in your face. Yeah. So violent and just like, it was just cruel. Like, it was just the characters and the what they turn into was just like, I, I was like, even I was like, holy shit. Like, so... Even it's, so, like you, you can even see like in the original, the original Evil Dead, like there's you know the fact that I feel like it's it's a little bit, it's trying to be taken very seriously in, in some aspects, but in other aspects is not. This movie kind of re- like you said removes all of that. Yeah, the campiness. Like yeah, even the fact why they're at the cabin. Yeah, like, like she's, just because they're trying to put they're trying to put the main girl through a detox. Like, yeah, like, like that's even that's dark. Like everything is fuck, and this movie is like. So incredible. Yeah, gory. Jane Levy does an outrageous. incredibly fucking good job yeah. too. Uh, the tongue splitting scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the girl that cuts her arm off with that fucking like electronic like just meat all carving of the girl thing. Cutting oh. her face with yeah. the broken mirror. Oof. It's just yeah. like it's, wild. And just the like the conversations that are had with the characters even before everything mm-hmm. goes down. It's just fucking mean. Like these people suck. Like yeah. all of them just suck, so yeah. it's just like kind of helps out. You're like, oh, I can't wait to watch them all get fucking ripped apart. <laughs> yeah, always so, makes it easier. Yeah, 
I haven't watched it in so long. It's, I remember watching it when it first came out. I saw it right when it came out, yeah. and then I haven't seen it since. I remember the under the floor thing was scary. You're all going yeah. to die tonight. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. But yes. that was scarier than the original. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot scarier. Yeah. Like, well, I think that was done intentionally, too. They yeah. wanted to make this a balls-to-the-wall, as you said, a, yeah. hardcore Terrifying. horror movie. It's, yeah, this is like a hard R rating, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. Hard R. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was hard, like, hard. done with you know 2010 special effects, right. huge yeah. budget. You know, Very, it was mostly yeah. practical yeah. effects yep. too, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I think it like broke a record for the most like gallons of fake blood. It was some like mm. outrageous like 75,000 gallons of fake that. blood. Yeah. I believe yeah. it. I believe it. So that's my third pick. Nice. Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. Dead. Yeah. Evil Dead There's a new Evil Dead movie coming out this year. Evil oh. Dead Rise, baby. Yeah, man, that's that also out coming out this is year. Is that another, yep. a remake of the remake? Uh, no, this is apparently going to be canon with the first three movies. Yeah, it's a, I guess it's going to go right to... It's going to be like one of those in theaters and also on HBO Max. Fuck yeah, man. Deals. I'm down. So that's rad. I'm absolutely in. I, I can't wait to rewatch the original trilogy right before. I'll see it in theaters. Yeah. I will too. Yeah. I also like that I can also go home the next day and watch it again. Right. On HBO. <laughs> like Batman for me, that's a long time. Like, well, yep. it's uh, lucky. Like, lucky for you, uh, it will be on HBO Max next week. That's Perfect. why. I'll watch that's it. Yep. right. <laughs> I know. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I get it, but you know, it's a long time to sit in a movie. I like going to the movies, but that's just yeah. Three hours is tough. I could watch Batman all day, so it doesn't really affect me too much. I know. So the Batman. Uh, the Batman. Did you see Jackass? For yeah, oh, I saw goodness. it in theaters, and yes. then I just rewatched it last week. On yeah, Paramount. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah, we gotta rewatch that. It's too. good. Honestly, that might have been the hardest. Seen, I haven't seen that yet. You haven't you seen it? We gotta watch. Dude, like that's the first comedy I've seen in theaters, and probably like. Close to yeah, fucking I don't, 10 years. I, yeah, I don't I go think, to the movies yeah. and see th- comedies. I mean, that might have been the hardest I've laughed in a movie since, like, oh Borat or Superbad. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I laughed that fucking hard. It, it was so fucking funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. Outrageously funny. You gotta see it. Outrageously funny. Gotta, gotta, gotta see Jackass. You gotta see Jackass. <laughs> see Jackass. <laughs> well, Sarah, Sarah had never seen the other ones, yeah. so I, we got to go back and watch all those. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's yeah. awesome, yeah. That's great. All right, cool. So that means we're back to you, Andy boy. Uh, Mullet mm-hmm. man. What's it going to be? <laughs> so, one of my favorite horror movies from the early 2000 teens would be 2012's Sinister. Nice. nice. I love that movie. Scott Derrickson, Ethan Hawke. by you. Oh, I love the movie so much. Like, the snuff films. You are being, the, you are dude, being very predictable. Shit. Shit. I am being very predictable. But that movie scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Me too. When he first sees the Bagul... Mm. Like in the background, the gobble the, yeah. the, 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 the gobble ghoul. Yeah, the gobble Dude, in the background, it just it's horrifying. And then you start seeing him in all the snuff films and the music in the snuff films. Yeah, just, like it's yeah. just so haunting. Yeah. And it's like it that movie creeped me. The it's fuck a scary out. fucking movie. Yeah, it's very scary. The also, one with the car fire. Yeah, the music yeah. in that one yeah. is like I remember watching that and just being. I was like, well, I was like. With some girl I was dating in high school, we were watching it in the, like her basement in the dark, and I just remember just being ugh, dude. Like, it's, it's just like, so <laughs> fucking. It's just creepy. like the worst ways, yeah. like the the pool one where they're just pulling oh, in the pool miserable. and they're just like sitting on it, and yeah. the lawnmower one. It's just like it's the, like the most fucked up ways to kill somebody. The, the yeah, only like, the only jump scare more effective than the one we were talking about in Insidious uh, earlier tonight is the lawnmower kill jump oh, scare. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh my god! god. Even yeah. Yeah. there's a scene where like Ethan Hawke is like looking at something else and like on the screen. The dude like turns his head, and I yeah. remember being like, yeah. oh, "Oh my god!" god. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of at the end, it kind of lets you down a little bit, but it's still good. Like it gets a little weird with the kids, and like, yeah. like which is fine. Like they're off in this like nether wherever yeah. they are. Yeah, but it's Never just a, it's a great <laughs> concept. Is that the mom from the Babadook? Oh, I don't uh, know. Is that the same woman? No, it isn't. No. But she's just as annoying yeah. with her British accent. Like she drives me insane. I mean. It very well could be. I'm not 100. percent I don't sure, think it's the same person. I'll, but she's, I'll look it up. This is a scary fucking movie. This movie, make, this make, movie no, scary. make no bones. This is one of those movies yeah. where I would watch it and then I would b- see if other people had seen it and be like, "You gotta watch this movie and watch it with them." Because yeah. I love when you like watch a movie with someone for the first time and yeah. they haven't seen seeing it, someone like, get the absolute shit scared out of them. It was just haunting. Yeah. Of all of the like movies that came out in that period, like with the Insidious, The Conjuring. Yeah. These all kind of are like this. They have the same feel to them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this one. I would say is easily the scariest one. Yeah. It yeah. scared me the 100%. most. Hundred percent. There's it was an article so different and weird. I want to say it's like bloody disgusting. Put it out. This is kind of a while ago. I shared it way back on my Facebook, but they did a scientific test on what movies actually scare people the most based on how it affects their heart rate, and this yep. was the number one. Makes sense. Yeah. To me. I'm, like, I'm it, not surprised by that at all. Actually, so yeah, it's just it's just. There's something about it. It's like, yeah. There's snuff films in general yeah. are going to creep you out. To the me. music, and I think the music the, has the a music huge is part just, of it. It's just, yeah. 
Music always plays right now. Yeah, well, it's half the movie is music. Yeah. Or bleak ending, movie. which I won't give it away ending. in case people haven't seen it, but it's bleak ending. It's tough. Yeah, so, I didn't like the it's second one that ending. much. Second one was meh. It was Doctor Who and or whatever. Who Off- Officer Doopa Doopa. Doctor Doopa Doopa. The ending of the so and so. The ending of the first one reminded me of the ending of the original Nightmare on Elm Street, where everything it just becomes super like surreal for yeah. a, a, like the last ten seconds, and it's just like you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, because like, yeah. it's very like straightforward and like kind of like. You know, high and tight, and then it just kind of like is bizarre as shit for like the last minute, and yeah, then it's like, over. What am I watching? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like it. All right, so that means we're back to me, right? Yeah, for two, back to, back to, to me for two, for two. Go ahead, uh, Andrew. Ooh, I apologize in advance for this one. <laughs> so I am Avoid. going to. Uh, oh well, I apologize twice then. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so <laughs> I am going to uh, select a awesome underrated movie that I guarantee you that most fans of horror have not seen, and you need to see this movie. Uh, directed by Karen Kusama, 2015's The Invitation. Uh, this movie fucking rocks. If you like cult horror, if you like weird horror, if you like. Uh, weird people doing weird horror things. This movie is fucking so great. Um, so basically, this is yeah, a guy. Weird worms. Yeah, weird. There's no weird worms in this one. <laughs> in the there's next no one, there's, got there's weird no worms. weird worms. Always. Um, into the T. So basically, it, it's a guy. Uh, he's played by Logan. Uh, I think his name is Logan Marshall Green. He's in a bunch of stuff. He's a good actor. Um, he goes to a dinner party at his ex-wife's house. Um, yep. Who has and any interest in doing that? Like, why does this? The movie should have ended before that yep. because people would have just been like, "Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I'm not right. gonna go." And <laughs> guess what? I, I, I haven't <laughs> seen this in a while. I would love to rewatch it, but I remember. So uh, it's the circumstances are are kind of vague and unexplained. But essentially, I think uh, he and his wife lost a child. They split up, and she went a different way. And it's implied very heavily that she, you know, kind of was embraced by this cult, or she she embraced this cult. And there are all these weird people at this dinner party, and you're kind of on the edge of your seat the entire tra- entire time trying to figure out if this is all in his head, or basically if all of the people at this dinner party, including his wife, are completely brainwashed, insane lunatics. <laughs> Very tense. Uh, great performance from one of the most underrated character actors of our generation. That would be John Carroll Lynch. He's in everything. He's great in Zodiac. He's great in his little parts in the American so Horror good. Story movies. He was great in season two of Channel Zero, uh, that sci-fi network show. He's good in everything. And he's really, really good in this movie. Good I know you're a huge fan of the Drew Carey show. Have you seen this movie? No, I haven't. You haven't seen The Invitation? No, All right, this is one you have to check out. I'm not going to I'm not gonna spoil it for you because... I'll watch it's, it for sure. It's, it's great. I'll watch it this week. I actually think it's on Shutter right now too. Okay, um, but I fucking love this movie. Oh, Andrew. Well, the yeah. other thing too is like it gives you that like weird vibe. Like I bet it's it on looks TV. like they're living <laughs> in the <laughs> same same area where like the Manson murders happen. Yes, like, they're literally living very in high end Hollywood. Like, high end Hollywood area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like the Hollywood so you just Hills. Get that whole vibe that they're just surrounded by a bunch yeah. of absolutely. Do you know what movie? I doubt it's on anybody's list, so I feel like I can mention it. Similar, not the same coherence. Have you Coherence? Yep, I've seen Coherence as well. Good movie. Another, that's a little bit more that's sci-fi. More sci-fi yeah. with the doppelgangers and like there's yep. like some comet passing overhead and it basically like there's two different realities going on at the same time what's mm. passing overhead yeah. and there's like a dinner party and it's a very interesting movie. I don't know if I'd necessarily call it a horror movie but it's a psychological like sci-fi thriller. Reminds me of The Invitation but it's different in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Both movies you should definitely watch though. It was tough because I was like there's so many good ones to choose from. It's hard mm. to like pick. And again, that, that's one we haven't done a full episode on, but I would, no, I would need love to, to revisit yeah. it. Um, and I, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this when you watch. Yeah, this. no, I'll watch that this week and I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, so Karen Kusama, who directed it, uh, she directed Jennifer's Body, which is uh, kind of uh, one of those that, that, like, that movie that, that that's, that's become a cult flick. Uh, she was also heavily involved in the first season of Yellow Jackets, which I know we were all big, big fans yeah. of. I loved that mm-hmm. fucking show. Yeah, so, show yeah, she's she's awesome. This movie flies way under the radar. It should be more recognized. Than... <sighs> so that means it's back to me for another one here. And, Andrew, I, I could very well take The Void here. I feel like I've, you know... We talked about that. We, we have talked about The Void quite a bit on the episode that we did on The Void. How the about void. that? So maybe I won't take that. Maybe, well, I, maybe I won't take that. All right, well, void. what are you going to take, take then? Take it's your void. pick. Let's go. Uh, so let's see here. So <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit of a deep cut here because I haven't done a lot of deep cuts right, over the last cut month it up. or so. 
So I'm going to go uh, with a movie from 2016 that is directed by Gore Verbinski. And this was out of left field from him because he prior uh, prior to this he was, uh, you know, fucking in a circle jerk with Johnny Depp doing the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And then he comes out of fucking left field with this demented-ass weird horror movie called A Cure for Wellness. Ah, you guys bad. ever seen this movie before? Yeah. Am I the only one? Have you seen I, this? I, I, I didn't end up watching it. Okay, so I won't spoil it again, but this is a movie you got to see. Uh, this is the type of risk that a director takes making a big budget horror movie like this that we need more of. And this is another one of those movies that's cr- uh, it's criminally underrated, incredibly fucked up from coming from such a big name director. And it's just weird. It's gory. It's gross. Uh, essentially, this movie is about a guy who works for this big financial firm in New York. Uh, the CEO of the company goes to some wellness center in uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe, Romania, Transylvania, somewhere. This gothic castle where people go to, uh, you know, heal themselves. The guy is not responding to any messages, so they send this kid there to, to get him back and take him there. He goes to get the guy, and uh, they try to leave, and under weird circumstances, there's an accident, and now this kid is imprisoned, maybe against his against his own will, maybe not. Maybe he's losing his mind in this gothic castle run by this weird uh, mad scientist who's played by Jason Isaacs, who, you know, when you see him, you'll know him. He's in a bunch of shit. And it is just like a throwback to, like, gothic horror, like almost like a universal classic monster type horror movie there's a lot of gores a lot of weird stuff like it'll it's just it's i don't know how to describe it beyond that but this is another movie that's underrated that you gotta check out and it's called a cure for wellness i remember that coming out thank me later and it just kind of like it just kind of slipped through the cracks for me i think (laughs) so uh gore verbinski in between you know all the pirates of the caribbean movies are actually before he did those movies He was in talks to direct a big Hollywood adaptation, a movie adaptation of the Bioshock video game series, which I am a huge fan of. It's an awesome first-person shooter series. It's like a horror, sci-fi, like dystopian type game series. Mm -hmm. I love the games, and you can kind of see some of the influence uh, that was left over from that movie that never got made in this particular... So... Again, I don't want to spoil it. I can't talk too, too much about it, but uh, you guys both need to check out A Cure for Wellness. What about me? A Cure wellness. for Wellness. We, I would both. happily watch it with you. Yes. <laughs> I was like, what about me? I don't know if it's a type of movie that you would you would like very much. I might not, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I would certainly watch it with you. Yeah, so uh, A Cure for Wellness and the invitation off the board. And back to you, Andrew. Uh, so I'm going to go with the 2013 film Under the Skin. Oh. Jonathan Glazer with well, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. Oh, man, cool. She's never <laughs> cool, looked better. Cool. It's such a, <laughs> such a weird movie. Yeah. Like, she's essentially like this extraterrestrial that's come down to Earth in this amazing body, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> I mean, and she just goes around picking up men and tempting them with sex and then killing them. It's just, but like the scenes were like... Like shooting fish in like, a barrel. Yeah, yeah, like basically she just like, it's like this dark pool of water that she just lures him in underneath. and It's just so like visually stunning. It's very clean. And clean yeah. and just, it's just such a weird it's movie. Sleek. It's sleek. And it's just basically just like goes to show like, how easily men can be manipulated by just appearance, Scarlet and she's answer. almost like it's almost like monster, <laughs> like like the monster, the um, Charlie's Theron movie, Charlie's yeah. Theron movie, yeah. yeah. which plays uh, yeah. Aileen Aileen yeah. Wernos, just, Wernos. You know, yeah. you know, basically just a bunch of piece of shit guys that she's just <laughs> just <laughs> luring them yeah. to their deaths, and yeah, yeah. kind of like Hellraiser, get. yeah, same thing, yeah, it is a, almost kind of like a reverse Hellraiser, yeah. It's actually no, it's not just a, a weird. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I feel like it's just a moody like type of movie. Like you watch it and you're like, "What am I watching?" And it's just for some reason it's just it's very entertaining and it's very just because it's, it's like Hellraiser and you love Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just exactly weird. What it and Scarlett exactly. Johansson's super hot. Yeah. So. yeah, and I would love to be lured into her death pool. Of lure, me, lure me, Scarlett. Lure me. Lure me. Have please. you seen that movie? I actually have not seen this movie. No, no you should I, watch it. It's weird. Okay, I, I, I would I would gladly check it out, but I just yeah. have not seen it's it. It's an Andrew movie. Yeah, I mean, I, movie, like, what am I watching? Listen, I like most Andrew movies. Uh, yeah. The only Andrew movie that you've recommended to me that I, I viscerally hated was Kill List, yeah, and I, I was like really movie. disappointed in how much I hated it, actually, because when you told me what the concept was, I was, that sounds fucking dope, and I just was not a fan. It's I wasn't surprising. a fan. I wasn't a fan, I tell you. I wasn't a fan. 
solid movie. So under the skin, I know of it. I know, I know of it, and I know that Scarlett Johansson is in it, and I know it's an alien Mm. movie, but I don't know much about about it beyond that. Very bizarre. Check it out. So you you check out a cure for wellness. I'll check out under the skin. Cure for wellness. That sounds like something. Mm. Cure for wellness. All right. That means that we're back to Matt. All right. So this is kind of like not. I mean, you could argue that this is not a horror movie. But it's got such horrific images scenes in it that I would say it fucking sure is. Gonna pick so you. I'm going to do 2018 Lars von Trier's The House That Jack Built. It's not what I was thinking, but okay. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> not what I was thinking. It, uh, this is the Matt Dillon movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if you haven't seen, you would love this movie. Yeah. For fucking sure. You might be like, eh, it's a little pretentious, because it is. Okay. <laughs> and But, like, the, the violence in it is, like, it's hard It's hard to watch. Um, and coming from me, that should fucking say a lot. I so, think we've talked about this before, yeah. There's, uh, I would put this in the category of extreme cinema. Um, I would put it up there with Irreversible, Audition, Funny Games, Cannibal Holocaust. It's in that tier of really rough, hard to watch. Um, there's a one particular spot in uh the uh the, the middle of the movie especially which i won't spoil because if you can go into it as blind as possible you are going to be fucking devastated mm. um basically it follows matt Dillon, who is confessing all of his sins to a priest and what metaphorically is considered to be him as he's walking through purgatory into hell oh. so and each part of the movie is uh portrayed as Incident one, incident two, incident three, yada, yada, yada. Starts off, he picks up a hitchhiking woman whose car broke down. Uh, She needs a new tire. And it's Uma Thurman, and she's just doesn't shut the fuck up. She's wicked annoying. Keeps badgering him. Basically just keeps calling him a pussy because he, like, doesn't really want to deal with her. (laughs) And he ends up just fucking cracks her in the fucking face with a tire (laughs) iron. Jesus. Yeah. Like, or, like, a big-ass wrench or something. He, or a car, like, a tire jack. Yeah. And uh, super violent, and, like, it goes from there, and you kind of, like, all right, like, this dude's clearly a maniac, but it goes to show that he's basically has access to this, like, super hidden, like, locked up freezer, like, full of, like, frozen, basically, like, frozen pizza. And (laughs) this is where he brings all the bodies, and he basically makes a house out of all the corpses of the people that he kills. And it is fucking insane when you see how it all comes together. And that's not really a spoiler, but, like, you know what's happening as it's going on. But there's some parts in the middle of the movie that are just so fucking, like, it, it starts off like that, and you're like, all right, yeah, I get it. And then it just... Like, that, like, flips on a dime into, like, full-blown, like, over the line, 100%. And you're just like, oh, shit, like, this isn't really the movie I fucking signed up to watch. So, yeah. like House I said. The Jack built? Yeah. It's on and it's Hulu. Matt Dillon, huh? Yeah. Mm. See, for some reason, like... He, <laughs> he does a really good job in it, too. That's funny, yeah. yeah. See, I love me It's some long. Yeah. It's, a, it's over two... It's at least, like, two hours and 20 minutes really? long. Really? Yeah. And, it's like, there's... Hulu. It's slow. Like, it's not, like... Like, there's stuff that happens, but... I think the content of it is just so fucking miserable that you're enduring each second that goes by. So uh, that will be my fourth pick because there's just nothing of this decade came out that was that fucking rough, in my opinion. Okay. So, yeah. The house that Jack built. Yes, sir. That's Lars von Trier, which Lars if you've seen von any other movies yeah. he's made, you'd understand that, yeah, okay. he's a fucking actor. All right. <laughs> We're All right. in five picks. Five. All right, okay. So, actually, I was going to say, so why don't you pick your fourth pick, and then I think we should do honorable mentions. From uh, around around the horn for all of us, right? Guess. Well, we do get five, but I, I mean, I guess we could do them like right at the end before or whatever. Yeah, because yeah. some of us might pick. That's true. Actually, yeah. okay. So right, yeah, right. okay. So okay. Pick, yeah. Pick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Well, that was lovely. It's not my turn. <laughs> 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 um, my fourth pick is going to be Ten Cloverfield Lane. Wow. With, okay. Uh, 2016. Interesting. With Early John good. Goodman. Good movie. Well, that was the first Cloverfield movie I saw. And it was funny because I thought that that was like Cloverfield. And then you were like, no, 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 no. That's not Cloverfield. This is the sequel to Cloverfield. And it had nothing to do, well, it, a little bit to do with it slightly at the end. Mm. But um, overall, I thought it was, it was between, well, my last pick was going to, well, not this, was going to be between this or um, Split. Have you guys seen Split? I have seen. Oh Split. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like. Yeah. I like yeah. John. I thought it was whatever. What's his name? Adrian John Brody. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. James. No, McElroy no. Of the, I'm thinking of no, no, no. Splice. I'm thinking of Splice. John McAvoy's yeah. a tennis player. Yeah, right? That's uh, John McAvoy. 
Macle- <laughs> yeah. Ma- ma- uh, no, John McElroy. Or James McElroy. McAvoy is James McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, but uh, I was like, yeah. they're both kind of the same idea, where they keep you know people kind of captured underground in a bunker or in like the the, the right. same idea, and then they're kind of like this is a better movie than Split. This, and that's this, why, is a, this is a better movie. That's than exactly split. why yeah. I, I didn't like Split. This yeah, no. of, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the whole idea with John Goodman plays a weird, creepy guy in this, which he's never really played a weird, creepy guy before. He's movies. fantastic in this movie. He's yeah, so he's good. great. Yeah. Um, and like his, the, the girl and the other guy wake up in this bunker, and he like tells them this elaborate story about how there was like a chemical reaction and that they need to survive. And they're like, I don't like what is the entire time they're trying to escape. And he's like, I'm trying to save you. Like I'm trying to help you here. Like I built this bunker for this reason. And like it's it's just yeah. scary. It's- Bizarre. It's, it's yeah. absolutely bizarre. And then at the very end, look, can I talk about, did you watch this? Um, what movie? Ten Cloverfield Lane. <laughs> Ten Cloverfield Lane. Mm-hmm. And at the end when, like, they Sorry, realize that, it's fine, Sorry, it's fine. Bad. But yes, I've seen that. It's a good movie. I like it. Yeah. And at the end when they realize that, like, <laughs> the air is fine and there's no chemical reaction, they go outside and then, like, aliens pop out of nowhere, which is, like, not what John Goodman played at all. <laughs> Whether or not he knew <laughs> that was going on outside or not was, like, another story, but, like... Well, I don't know if he said it was a chemical thing, but he, it turns out he was telling the truth because there was an invasion of some sort there was an in the invasion. world. Yeah, yeah. There was an so, alien invasion. Which is the only part that ties it to Cloverfield. But, right. Other than the name. Other than the right. name <laughs> that has Cloverfield yeah. in it. Yeah. But I liked it. I thought it was scary as hell because you were kind of just the whole time wondering what is going to happen to these people. Like, when's he going to kill them, pretty much? Yeah. It's incredibly suspenseful. It's it's a great movie. It's very tense. And I feel like that is the strongest part of the movie. Now, I am all for all kinds of monsters, aliens. and all that. that was a very cool twist at the end. I understand yeah. why it might have ruined the movie for some people. Um, it didn't for me, but I, you know, I, I was a fan of this movie, big time. John Goodman, awesome in this movie. Great actor, underrated actor, one of his best roles, I yeah. think. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm actually really excited about my next. Bring it. Are you? Good. Yeah. I'm glad. We need some excitement on this podcast. Okay. Yes, go ready, for ready, it. Okay, ready, let's ready? go. Be excited. Okay. I'm very excited. All right, so for my last pick, because I knew no one's going to pick it, so I <sighs> left it for the God, end. What, what are we doing? You know what it is. No, Do you I? don't know what it is. Do okay. I? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. What is it going to be? It's what 2017's. Happy Death Day. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Gross. To <laughs> you. <laughs> it's like that song. Uh, it's, it's your birthday. birthday. Why don't you pick up the phone? Oh, this is like such a you movie. It is I like, love this movie yeah, so much. Yeah, I know you do. I oh, know it's you do. awesome. It's this girl who, you know, she ends Whose up name is Tree. Her name is Tree. Tree. Yes. <laughs> Tree Glidman. I love this movie. Yeah, and yes. she dies. She keeps dying, and she's wondering why she keeps dying. It's a Groundhog over. Day. It's Groundhog yes. Day, but yes. with a slasher. It's yeah. Scream meets Groundhog Day. Yeah, exactly. Right. So with she's... a baby face mask. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, she dies differently every time. Did you see this? No, and I have no interest. Oh, you should. It's so it's good. good yeah. yeah, it's good. I'll watch it if you watch Under the Skin. Okay. Fair. You'll hate that movie, and I'll hate this movie. All right. Fair, mm-hmm. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so this girl keeps dying again and again and again. She for- or Everyone forgets who she is. So she has to like, remind everyone who she is, whatever. Different story every single time. Um, eventually, she thinks she figures it out. She th- realizes that like her brain, like her body is actually taking us back and all this stuff. But, yeah, I love, I love is this, this movie. Have, is this with the girl from Yellow Jacket? No. Is she from, like the no. big bug eyes? It's not like no, okay. no, no. She kind of looks... Uh, she's a basic way. blonde chick. Whatever, I think. I, I, I was I was actually surprised that I did not hate this movie. It, oh, it's, really? it's a It's a passable good movie. It's, um, Look at you picking passable good passable movies. Passable good movies, the, the, yeah. con- the concept, I feel like it's a little bit tired when you get into the second movie, and they're talking about making a third one. I well, they know, know that. I don't know that we need that. So. I don't know that we need right. that. But it's definitely it, it's interesting. It's an interesting, like Matt said, scream mixed with Groundhog Day, which is an interesting right. concept for a horror yeah. movie. It probably hasn't really been done before. And yeah, I mean, it's a it, it, it's a good movie. I I liked Happy Death Day. I will. How about I Light. just I just said wow. that out loud. Yes, wow. I appreciate wow. it. Happy Death Day. Mike liked the movie that you watched. Ah, yes. Just. Happy Death Have Day to you. you. Two. Not so Did much, like it? but it was okay. It was okay. I yeah. like. I, I recently watched that movie Freaky with like Vince Vaughn. Oh, see, I Is haven't that seen that. One it, it was, it's like the same. Uh, yeah, okay. idea. Same I want to watch it. Now. Yeah, Freaky. It's, you, I'm you, write that down. You'll love it. Okay. I know that. Hundred percent. It's like Trading Places. It's not bad. It's fun. Teenage Girl or like. Freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. 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 Freaky, that's yeah. Okay. Right in the Happy Death Day. Actually, I forgot about that movie, but now I'm not surprised at all. I might make it. that my ringtone for a little bit, just for fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Oh, Kill no, me now. no, it's going to happen. 
It's that Deadpool whatever song song right. Deadpool. Yeah, it's what like Deadpool. Song? Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, no, it's gonna be it's your birthday. Death, you Why are my bitch you pick lover. Up that phone? God damn it. Can't All right. Wait. That sounds yes. like the worst ringtone. It Andrew, is. It's the Andrew, best. you are going to hate this movie with so much viscera. <laughs> I can feel it coming <laughs> off of you already. Yeah, in the I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> oh no, you got it. I'm just saying I'm gonna watch it. Just I doubt the it. same way she's gonna watch that Rip other my skin visceral off? under the skin. <laughs> visceral, <laughs> look at visceral hatred. Johansson. Like visceral hatred. I There's want, a redeeming I, uh, quality to this movie. All right, so that means that we are back to Matt for his fifth and final movie. So I've I've kept like looking at the movies I picked today. And they're all pretty fucking hard um, in terms of just being rough watches. So I think I'm going to just stick with that theme. Uh, <laughs> I like the theme. Good Sarah's going to fucking hate me for this one. Um, 2017, Darren Aronofsky's I, mother. See, that's what I thought you were going to pick last mm. time. That's the so, one that I thought you were going to pick last time. This <laughs> easily is the most... I, I don't think I've watched a movie that's actually mentally and physically affected me the way this one. Um, never have I ever felt stress or anxiety watching a movie to the umpteenth like amount that i've felt during this movie um basically to put it short jennifer lawrence and javier bodem are married um they're working on trying to have a baby they're like in this secluded home he's a writer he's suffering writer's block all of a sudden this like random couple shows up at his house and they're big fans of him and like he's like oh like they're i forget like if their car breaks down they're in some sort of something happens and they need help and like, he's like yeah come on in whatever and she's kind of like all right like this is our house though like and everyone that keeps coming in is just like acting like it's their own fucking house and just not giving a shit about anything that she's saying to them and like just more and more people keep showing up there's a lot of stuff that has to reference the bible in terms of mm. like the killing like Cain and Abel Mm. Um, and just like all this other shit that goes on. And so it turns into basically like there's like thousands of people in their house. It's like a full scale fucking riot. There's like SWAT teams trying like killing people, like police are killing people like in their home. And it's just like, people are just doing whatever they want. There's like journalists that are asking her how she's feeling about it. And it's like mind boggling. And it's just this literal fever dream nightmare of a fucking movie. And, like, there she, while at this point, as it goes on, she's, like, pregnant and give, has to give birth in her own house because she can't leave. The husband doesn't give a fuck about any of the shit that's going on. And it is just so over the top. And, like, the ending is just devastating. It's fucking brutal. I'm not going to say what ends up happening. Yeah. But it's out of control. It's about as wild of a movie yeah. as I've Yeah, and seen. so yeah. I was, like, looking at the movies I picked, I was like, you know what, I've only picked, like, real gut-punch movies, so, I mean, I might as well top it off with Dude, arguably yeah. the most gut-punch movie that's ever fucking been. <laughs> I can't believe Darren Aronofsky. I forgot about that movie. Yeah. That Dude, movie is so good. For me, Darren Aronofsky with Black Swan and then, like, Requiem for a Dream, to mm. me, is, like, the just most fucking depressing movie of all time. Yeah, I would agree there. I that, love that movie. Yeah, I know. I, I, it's weird because I do love the movie because yeah. it's so good, yeah. but it's just, it's, so dark. it's like, harrowing. Like, yeah. I can't watch the whole movie again because it's just, I feel, like, shit for, like, a week. Yeah. yeah. Like you um, said, it's essentially, it's the Bible. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. It's yeah. Jesus. It's the, everything. It's only begotten. Creation. It's everything. Mm-hmm just encompass into this one monumental fuck house. Like, yeah. It is so bizarre. Yeah. It's bat shit it's fucking so crazy. good. Like, the, the end of that movie is just like, what am I watching? Yeah, yeah, it gets to the point that, like, we, she, Sarah was like, I'm just, I'm pissed that yeah. we yeah. just watched what that did you, What it did you, what did you got to the point where you? God was like, you know what, time for a Well, I felt the same way, because I had tried to watch it three or four times before we both sat down and we just watched the whole thing, and I got, like, 40 minutes into it every time, and I was just either had somewhere to go, or I was just like, I don't know, I got I'm something, you know what I mean? Just something yeah. came up, I just yeah, didn't yeah, finish yeah. it. Yeah. It's and even me, I was just like, oh my god, I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Like, it's one of those movies where you either love it or you absolutely. I don't think anyone loves this movie. Oh, I'm, I'm see, I, uh, I love this movie. I, <laughs> I, awesome. I did not care for this movie. My I'm only picking it because you want, you want to say you want to talk about pretentious fucking movies. Yeah. Holy shit, this is a pretentious movie. I'm yeah. only picking it because it very, is uh, horrific. It's a great satire, and it's pretty spot on of humans and. Yeah, like just it take, is. take, 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 take whatever you're gonna give me. Well, who's the the, the lady that comes in at first? The blonde lady that was on like Mother CSI. Earth. 
Yeah, but like whoever that actress is. Oh, I can't remember. But dude, she's just like the worst. (laughs) And it's just like from there, you're just like, it's just unbelievable how little Jennifer Lawrence has to say about her own fucking home. Right. And it's just like, right. Oh, dude, it makes you so fucking angry the entire time. But it makes sense. There's a a lot of allegory in this movie, too. You're talking about all all the Bible stuff, but also this can be seen. You can look at this as like, you know, uh, a parable for like humans continuously more general. populating the earth and destroying yeah, the earth. That's what it is. Like, so yeah, I don't think it's pretentious like, yeah. in any way. I think I, it's a good. I think it's a big fuck uh, you. To maybe the human maybe race. pretentious isn't the right word, but it's just like it's very heady. I feel like you have to like you have to be in in, in the right mindset to watch this type of yes. movie. It isn't Kristen Wiig in this too. Kristen Wiig yeah, plays she's a very like, serious she's like role the, in this. She's like the yeah, that's the, right. His, I forgot um, about that. Like his like uh, what do you call it? Yeah, or or his something like. She's like assistant or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I will say the cast is phenomenal between Jennifer Lawrence, Javier Bardem, uh, everyone Ed does Harris, good in it. Yeah, uh, is it Michelle oh, Michelle Ed Pfeiffer's Harry, yeah. in it? Right, Michelle Pfeiffer's in it. Donald Gleeson. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, there's a bunch of people. Yeah, Kristen Wiig. Yeah, she plays yeah, like his ton. publicist yeah. or his like agent or something. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's a fantastic. I love that movie. But it's just like movie unbelievably wild. fucking miserable movie. Yeah. So I was. That's why I was. You know what? I might as well you just keep go this balls to the wall. Yeah. Balls to the wall, baby. Just go. <laughs> All five of my movies are just upsetting. You but. like you like that movie too, right? I'm like, what? What are we even talking? about? About. Mother? <laughs> oh! Mother! I that was what you were talking oh, about. Jesus. I totally was like spaced Dude, out. Dude, what is going on? What, just... what is going on with you two? You pay attention, <laughs> either of you? I'm paying attention. I only, I pay attention to everybody except for Cass. Well, it's so, so funny because he was God. like Jennifer Lawrence in the house and this and I was like, I feel like I've seen this before. Oh, you're because we watched like, it the together. Road. Yeah. I think I missed you I, say I, the like, title of the movie and then I was like, I don't know, I probably didn't see this movie. No, you definitely did. No, I did, yeah. Yeah, you definitely did, yeah. Not like, but I mean, yeah, I've seen this movie. I remember this. You movie. definitely did. Sarah's like. definitely. If you if she listens to this, she's gonna be like, you could have easily picked another movie you made me watch with you. Cat <laughs> liked one. this movie more than I did. I, I, I actually remember movie watching I movies. Forgot about so. it, and this movie deserves to be mentioned. It does because it's so good. Okay, yeah. and so bad. I like Jennifer so Lawrence. Good. I mean, who does? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Last pick. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, 2016 French film Raw. Nice. That would have been some of my other ones if I didn't. That know movie's better. weird. Like. If you can deal with subtitles, mm-hmm. it's a good movie. Like it's basically this it is, girl it's a good movie. Who's it's going a very to good veterinarian movie. school? Another another and gross she movie. She has like this. <laughs> yeah. There's this like this one is really good. Yeah. Where they have to eat like rabbit kidneys or yeah. flesh or something. And they eat it and then she just sort of de- the hunger lust. For yeah, just raw. Did that movie get blood. an award? Uh, probably. Probably like a Sundance. I feel like or yeah. Like yeah. Or Khan maybe. It's just a, it is slowly French, she just French continues to develop this lust for food and then she ends up killing like her sisters and eats them. Something. She like bites his finger off. Yeah, she like yeah. bites his finger off, and he like freaks out. And then like, what I love is at the end of the movie is like her dad like he's like, oh, I know where you get, you get it from your mom, and he's like shows her like all the wounds yeah, he's got all these from like, her just like yeah. ripping out of them. flesh yeah. out of. It's such a weird movie, and it's for it's me, it's so her good. just eating the raw chicken out of her fridge. That's yeah. that that sucks. so gross. Yeah. And there's yeah. people that actually do that now, like they yeah. eat, like just Fuck raw those chicken. I only eat raw organic chicken. Gross. The texture of chicken, raw chicken is it's awful. Like if you ever just have you just cut raw chicken? Have you ever just cut raw chicken? It feels it's uncomfortable. It's weird. Yeah, it's definitely strange. I have gloves at my house because I don't like <laughs> touch like raw chicken. chicken. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's riddled with salmonella. Yeah, yeah. it's just disgusting. Yeah. I, I'm surprised you've seen that movie. Raw? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. That was definitely... That, that's, it got a lot of buzz because people were, like, fainting and shit. Like, anytime yeah. you hear, like, it's, like, people but fainting that I don't at this get. film festival. Like, it's not, like... Like, it's weird, but it's not, well, like... Well, the majority of... The, ma- the majority of people yeah, that's are... That's <laughs> Pussies. It's not really When you hear those chicken. things, like, uh, like people aren't fucking fainting in movies. Who's at the movies fainting? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody is fainting at the movies. No. But Nobody it makes you want to watch that movie and find out why. Yeah. Oh, my God, this fake movie made me faint. Yeah. Like, like, what do you think? Like, there were actually people oh, like no. vomiting <laughs> during The Exorcist in the seventies. Like, yes. do you think? Do you think like, yes. maybe that I can see? Like, do you think people were actually like fainting or throwing up during Hostel in two thousand and six? Ah, uh, throwing came up, out? maybe. Maybe some people might these have left. Are, the these theater. are people I don't want to yeah. talk to. Yeah, I don't know. I guess yes. I'm interested. In talking to you. I feel like I, I'm. I'm kind of like Jerry Seinfeld. I feel like I, it's very. It's incredibly hard for me to throw up. So Why for me to feel all nauseous. These people throw up? Why are they all fainting? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't drawn up since 227, 1932. It's been 10 years. It's just a moment. Look to the cookie. Look to the cookie, Elaine. Oh, my God. Uh, 10 years down the drain. Raw, raw. There's a lot of big movies left on the board here. 
All right, so are. I guess before I make my last pick, the last the last pick of the draft, you want to run through some uh, some. Uh, no, make your what pick. What if you pick it? Pick but it. nobody else is picking after me. Why don't me? you do your honorable mentions? Yeah, but what if we mentions? pick your pick? And then pick you your can pick do your I'll do my honorable mentions before yes. I do my last pick. I'm so excited about, about, about that? the goddamn honorable mentions. Oh, my God. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of movies At least I'm paying attention. Okay, I just, it was, a, I had a moment. Yeah. So. Oh, you have lots of moments. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I feel like in this decade there are the big boy movies that uh, you know weren't necessarily picked. We might have mentioned some of them, some of them in passing, and I think those movies are as follows: Hereditary, uh, phenomenal movie; Get Out, The Conjuring, The Witch, It Follows, The Babadook. I would even consider, and Andrew, I can't believe you didn't are you take this movie. Are you taking all of the honorable mentions? Uh, no, Just I'm saying. going through some of mine. If you'll stop interrupting, thank you very much. Move. Uh, don't breathe. Andrew. I was that was yeah. on my. I have that on mine. The too. turkey yeah. baster scene. Oh, Oof. Man, one of the best. Gross. Yeah. Gross yeah, wild, stuff. Wild turn of events that one takes. Yeah. That one is so weird. Dude. Yeah, you didn't end up taking the void, Andrew, which uh, neither of us like, talked yeah. about. We do have an episode on the void. Go back and listen to it. that movie. Fucking rocks. Oh, so good. I love it. And I love It Chapter 2. I don't care what anybody says. And also, I think one of the bigger movies that flies under the radar from this decade is uh, is The Black Coat's Daughter, which I know we talked oh, yeah. about in an episode. That yep. movie was fucking dope. Uh, Ready or Not's a great movie. Scary stories to tell in the dark. Mm. Southbound. Cool movie. Creep. Southbound. Right, Creep. I just watched Southbound last week. Uh, uh, Andrew? It was okay. Yeah. yeah. Ghost Stories. That's good. That anthology yeah, movie. With, British uh, anthology Martin, movie uh, with uh, Martin Freeman. Yeah. Awesome flick. One. <clears throat> Matt thought for sure you might have picked Gerald's game. I have it on my list. Okay, that would, it's an honorable mention. Yep. Apostle. Yeah, but you're uh, just gonna name every movie. Nope, that, believe me, I'm sure there's, there's <laughs> way more. It's fine. There's way more. I had this is my longest. I'm gonna list. double down on a couple. Yeah, of them. I'm sure. Yeah. He, I'm sure he is. Uh, Annihilation, which is an Alex Garland I had movie. That on there too. Uh, Mama, the Guillermo del Toro movie from the. Did uh, you watch that? We saw it in theaters. It's got Jamie Lannister and Jess, Jessica Chastain in it. We saw it in Fantastic. theaters. Fantastic. That's correct. Oh. I thought that was Andy Muschietti that did that. Uh, Muschietti did it, but uh, Del Toro was a producer. That's right. Okay. So it was before because the uh, the Mama Ghost in Mama is very similar to the painting ghost or painting version of Pennywise in It. Oh yeah, yeah. Very when and the, Mus- like, Muschietti synagogue. did it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Monsters, great flick. The Shallows, nice little shark movie. Ugh. Uh, Predators, awesome little predator movie with Adrian Brody. Bone Tomahawk. That. And then I had Blair Witch and Annabelle Comes Home. So that was uh, essentially my entire list for I this. I hated Blair Witch. Did you really? Yeah. See, I really like that one. I saw that in theaters by myself. I was the only person there. Really? And I remember, I, I if I one of these days it's going to come up on my Facebook memories and I'll, mm. I'll tag you in it, but yeah, I definitely. like wrote just a blisteringly Stating angry review. review about it. That's another <laughs> movie that Kat and I saw in theaters that she probably doesn't remember seeing. We definitely saw that in theaters. No, I saw that. Yeah, we we saw it. We we. So we, we. Uh, so obviously, <laughs> I uh, I know that I, I named a lot of movies there, but um, I'm gonna go with my most mainstream pick here, and I'm going to say I'm going to take uh, I think the best movie from this decade uh, and one of the best horror sequels ever made, and I'm gonna pick Doctor Sleep. Oh, what a- uh, Doctor Sleep is a masterpiece. Uh, we talked about it on the episode that we did, but I feel like it's been a while since we talked about it. Um, it is, obviously, I feel like the movie is somewhat of an enigma, and Matt, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this, because I know you're a huge Stephen King fan like me, but obviously the big issue with The Shining as a whole is that the book is one thing, and Kubrick Shining is it another thing entirely that Stephen King has famously hated for so many years, so the fact that Mike Flanagan was able to kind of take both of those stories, uh, and he was able to make a sequel to Kubrick's The Shining and also Stephen King's Shining. And blend the two movies together, I, I think was just an incredible feat of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And, and this, writing. I, I think honestly, you know, there have been a lot of rising directors in the 2010s that we've talked about, whether it's Ari Aster or Robert Eggers or Jordan Peele. I don't know that any horror director has put out more good content in this decade than Mike Flanagan. I mean, between Oculus, between Gerald's Game, between this movie, uh, between what was the other one that we are? We were, uh, Hush. We were just talking about mm-hmm. Hush earlier. Uh, I mean, <laughs> technically, I think uh, Haunting of Hill House was in the 2010s, yeah. right? Uh, and then he also did Bly Manor and uh, Midnight Game. Mass, but those were also in the 2000s. Th- this guy is just hitting home runs Did you say Gerald's everywhere. Game? Gerald's, Gerald's Game, Game. Yep. Yeah. yep. I mentioned that one, but I just think that 
this is such a well executed movie. It's incredibly interesting. It's incredibly creepy. Uh, the true knot, terrifying group of villains. Rose the Hat is horrifying. Brutal. And I think that the second part of the movie, and obviously spoilers, um, but if you haven't seen this movie and you're a fan of The Shining, then what the fuck are you actually even doing? The second half of this movie, when they actually go back to the Overlook, I think is some of the coolest stuff that you will see as a horror fan in any sequel, just because they're not using archived footage in no. this movie. They are recasting the actors. Like, there is a new Dick Halloran that looks exactly like Scatman Crothers. There is a new Wendy Torrance that looks exactly like, uh, sorry, what's Shelley your name? Duvall. Uh, Shelley Duvall. And uh, Henry Thomas is playing Jack Torrance, which I thought was a spot-on performance by him. He didn't overly try to be Jack. He looks enough like him. He sounds enough like him. He's got the hair prosthetics on. Mm-hmm. I just thought the stuff with the Overlook was fantastic. It's, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It's great. So I can't say enough good things about uh, Doctor Sleep. It's a phenomenal sequel, phenomenal movie, and I think my personal favorite uh, horror movie from the 2010s. Nice. It's amazing. Movie. Yeah, it's, I can't, it's very I can't, good. I can't argue with that. Yeah. So The story itself is so fucking good. Yeah. Um, have, did you read the book? I have not read Doctor Sleep. It's good. Yeah. It's very good. Um, it's very scary. It's much more violent and brutal yeah. than uh, the movie, which is already pretty fucking hardcore. Yeah, I mean, it opens the, up. Yeah, that scene with the kids. I remember reading kids, the first yeah. like twenty pages of it, and I was like, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it was just so creepy, and like it's like all about Dick Halloran's experience with like his dead grandfather, like basically like borderline molesting him, and like like antagonizing him as a ghost and it's just it's very fucking it's just like this yeah, was like the first 20 pages of the book it's like holy shit and the so. the, uh, the overlook stuff obviously is not in the book because the overlook burns down at the end of the, the first book yeah so yeah I, I gotta I gotta get back around to that one um, but yeah I just I love this movie yeah. so much it's, and it's on HBO Max now so I feel like I've I I've, think I've, they I've have the director's cut on there too yeah oh, which good is stuff. like super long it's like three hours long yeah and, and, and again Mike Flanagan I can't say enough good things about him I feel like the, you know the, he's just the type of name that like when those when when something's attached to him uh, I'm gonna watch it yeah from now there's some of there's just that's what we've kind of came to with the 2010s is those directors right. So. Yeah. All right. So that's what I got for Doctor Sleep. So, uh, what did you, did you guys have any honorable mentions that you want to talk about? I definitely do. Yeah, go for it, Matt. Um, I'll run through. There's a couple I want to talk about a little more extensively, but I'll run through a couple that are just brief mentions. Uh, 2008, Panos, Cosmatos, Mandy. Yeah. Um, there you go. This one. Yep. I would like to give some flowers to David Robert Mitchell's It Follows. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert Eggers, The Witch. Um, let's see. Oh, Andre Oradal, 2016, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Oh, oh that, was that was great. I forgot about that movie. That's a really good yeah. one. Uh, Sang Ho Yeon, 2016, Train to Busan, which is a cool little zombie movie. Yep. Uh, Ridley Scott, 2012, Prometheus. Because the only I when I watched that movie, I was like, "Wow, this is a lot like Alien." And then it ended, Turns and I was like, was. "Oh, that's because it fucking is Alien." Yeah, that's, I love Prometheus, and I actually got some love for Alien Covenant. I was gonna too. say so yeah. uh, alongside that, 2017 Alien Covenant as well. Um, so I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing this one. Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz. Uh, 2014, Goodnight Mommy. This is from Austria. Yes, um, yeah, that's a fucked up movie. So you'd like then, that movie, Andrew? Yeah, you would. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, I had up. Raw. I had Kevin Smith, Tusk, 2014. Tusk, that would be so. <laughs> um, Justin Long. And then, like, really extensively, I I just want to I I got to talk about Hereditary. Yeah, I know you guys oh. talked about it on the show before, but I saw this in theaters when it came out. And I had, this was just like a visceral experience. Um, the, there's so much emotional stuff that comes with this movie. Um, I feel like when you're watching it, especially after the girl dies and you're watching Tony Collette kind of deal with that. Yeah. It's, it feels like you're not supposed to really see the scene as of her grieving. Cause you're like, it's such a personal moment and she fucking delivers it. So, and like, it's like, it's agonizing to watch. Yeah. And it's just, you feel like you're not supposed to really be yeah. that fly on the wall for it. Um, the argument at the dinner table, like these, like it's, it's like a drama, but at the same time, it's like horror because you're just like, ah, you're like, I don't want to fucking watch this. Like, um, 
And then the end of the movie when everything sh- shit hits the fan. The quietest jump scare ever made of all time. When she's perched up in the corner yeah. of his room oh, and yeah. you can't even oh, see her. Yeah. Oh, and then all of a sudden, you just you, once you notice it, it's like, just... I yeah. remember I was like, fucking Jesus Christ, <laughs> she's in the fucking corner. Like, yeah. I remember, and I don't jump, dude. And they're, mm-hmm. they're, like I said, that's not a jump scare. Yeah. But it's just, she's there the whole time in plain sight. Yeah, you yeah. just don't you see just it. notice it. Oh, and so it just, good. it gets so fucking balls to the wall. With Ari Aster, I love Midsummer. I know you guys didn't like it, but Midsummer fucking was nuts. Yeah. yeah. Um... And then I guess I'll give a good shout to The Witch because uh, there's some stuff in that movie that's super fucking dark. Um, The scene when the little boy dies and he, like, proclaims his love to Jesus Christ and, like, coughs up a fucking apple. It's just, like, the apple of fucking Adam and Eve. Mm. And he ends up dying. And then, like, the scene when, like, she thinks that her two kids are back, the boy with the baby... And it's really just a couple of crows like pecking at her chest. It's oh just yeah, like, that's so, damn, yeah, dude, so like, messed up. Very, very like traditional dark satanic vibe. Yeah. Um, extremely well done. And then of course the oh, the yeah. black Philip goat and everything. Oh yeah. man, um, weird kids. Black Philip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll never forget the, the first time I saw that movie. I saw that, 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 that in theaters as well, oh, and I was God. just like, holy shit. Yeah, so that, that scene with the two too. crows like pecking at her chest, uh, I remember I just kind of like put my hands on my head and I was like, oh my Yikes. god, dude. Oh. It's like, it's just vicious. <laughs> yeah. Well, good calls on all of those. Good calls. Cat, Andrew, honorable mentions. Anything you want to talk about before we uh, put a bow on this bitch? I had, um, I had your next. Okay. Uh, anyone... Nobody brought that one up. One. Yeah. One? yeah. Um, did anyone, did anyone mention the car? I mentioned it briefly. Kind of briefly, yeah. Yeah. Briefly. yeah. yeah. Um, I also had Horns, Daniel Radcliffe. Okay. I thought you were going to pick that movie. I'm surprised you didn't. That's yeah. a Joe Hill book. Didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked that movie. Uh, Goosebumps? Uh, yeah, I mean. Is that the Jack Black the Jack one? Black. The Jack Black yep, one. Yep, yep. I, I actually loved that movie, so I, I can't hate. Yeah, yeah, I can't hate. That's a good movie. Um, and I had, what, well, uh, Bird Box? I didn't. I hate Sandra Bullock. See, so I she know. drives. I me think everyone, insane. You guys, yeah, Bird Box is okay. Um, I can't believe that you didn't pick Quiet Place. Well, given I how much you love I, that I movie. actually don't. I can't believe I, no one did. No yeah. one did. Yeah. But I, I felt like that movie was, was all right. Didn't we already talk? Good. We already talked about. Quiet we covered a Quiet yeah, Place Part have. Two. We well, covered a sequel. Like this. I know, but I didn't want to. I want. I didn't want to do all. Mo- I could have done. Um, it follows a Quiet Place, like all the Babadook. I could have done all movies that we've already talked about, but I wanted to be a little bit outside the box. Oh, good. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, cool. One. Yeah, I think that was it. The ones that. Uh... Andrew, do you have anything that's burning a hole in your pocket that you want to talk about uh, before we sign off tonight? So, 2014 Starry Eyes. Ah, uh, that's a good I one. Too. I love that movie. I can't believe I didn't. Colch and Widmeyer, the directors, before they did that shitty fucking Pet Cemetery remake they did. Oh, is that yeah, the same? Yeah, that's the same directors. That. Yep. I mean, Starry Eyes is awesome. That's a good that's, movie. That's it's a, a 20, 2010s movie, too. That was 2009. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh, I hate um, it. Um, 2000 in the Shadows? Ah, oh, that's <laughs> I, I, I kind of danced around yeah. that one, yeah, but yeah, yeah, so yeah. I ended up taking it. Uh, and then 2017, um, You Were Never Really Here. Uh, Isn't okay. that with Jaqueen Phoenix? No, Jaqueen. I've never seen that. Jaqueen. 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 2015's The Invitation and 2019's Doctor Sleep to round it out. Mr. Audette, what did you have for your five? Alright, I had 2016 uh, Damien Leone's Terrifier, 2015 Jeremy Salnier's Green Room, 2013 Fede Alvarez's uh, The Evil Dead, uh, 2018 Lars von Trier's The House That Jack Built, and 2017 Darren Aronofsky. Mother, mother. <laughs> Catherine. I had um, 2000 Sidious, then 2011's Cabin in the Wood, 2000's Hush, 2006 again, The Lane, and 2017 Happy Death Day. To you! To ya! Mr. Andrew. Uh, I had 2019 Us, I had 2019, I think, The Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had uh, <laughs> Sinister from 2013. 12. 
2012, 2013, I had Under the Skin, and then I had Raw for 14, 16, 16. 16. 16. Okay, 16. cool. I was like, wait a minute, I don't remember. I'm a it's some, yeah, some, that's good, a, some that's good picks French all around. Yeah. Yeah. A French film. Uh, French. That category is about French phrases, so <laughs> let's just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Well, I mean, I guess uh, it's been a long episode tonight. This is a deep decade, some deep, deep, deep levels of movies that go down deep. Deep, deep. Nice and deep, like. <laughs> and even though we, like, didn't make an omitted list. I feel like we all just automatically. Yeah, we were <laughs> yeah, it's some, like just by like yeah. we just do it. Which I appreciate. General. I appreciate. Well, this has been fun over the last month doing yeah, this, you guys. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So I got to figure out some way. I'm, I'm going to probably put together some collages of uh, everything that everybody picked over the uh, the last five decades that we talked about, and uh, maybe we can do some sort of a poll or something to see, uh, you know, if people can pick who did the best cool. drafting over the last uh, yeah. the last fifty years of filmmaking. So we've uh, we've uh, done a lot of time traveling, talked about a lot of movies. It's been a fun month. I want to know how many movies, like total, like not just because we had. Like we each like each year was different with how many movies we like yeah. specifically picked, but we had honorable mentions in each ones too. Yeah. We, we easily had to have talked over, about over a hundred movies. Oh, well, oh over, well, over, yeah. Yeah. well over, over hundred. Yeah. yeah. Easy. I know the first one, the seventies one, we talked about like thirty five movies. Yeah. yeah. We talked and that was just the three of us. Yeah. We went like yeah. deep. Yeah. And, and we talked about it too. We, we we picked twenty movies tonight. And I mean the honorable mentions we probably talked about another, another. Like, twenty, thirty, something yeah. like that. So yeah, well, when I, I I gotta go back and do some editing and uh you know, compile a list of everything that we talked about so I can report back on that. But uh yeah, it's been fun. And Matt, thank you so much for joining us over Thanks the last for month, me. It's man. It's always awesome nice time. to have you on and we can't wait to have you back again. 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 All right, so I think unless we have anything else, you guys, that's gonna uh put a bow on this bitch for another episode of America's Hometown Horror. Um, if you're interested in more of what we have to say on the intranet, here's where you can find us. The first place would be our website, which is apod.com. It's A-H-H-P-O-D.com. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. Just search for America's Hometown Horror, and we will pop right up. You can also tweet at us, at Hometown Horror. You can find us on Instagram, at Hometown Horror Pod. And shit, you can even shoot us an email at hometownhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. And you can also find our show wherever you're listening right now, but we're everywhere. Spotty, uh, Spotty, whoop, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, blah, de blah, de blah, de blah, de blah, and on and on it goes. My name is Mike. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the show, and I've been joined by Cat. Matt and Andrew. Cat Matt. Oh, I like it. it rhymes. <laughs> Guys, say goodbye to your listeners. Goodbye. Later. Thank you. Later. Good evening. Go watch all those movies yes. right now. Yes. Yeah. Just go watch all of them now. Meow. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror. And just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show because, of course, we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus, and Old Colony Cast. Head on over and give them a listen.